Copperfield, I think. Yes, but... You've heard of Miss Betsy Trotwood, aunt of your late husband? Yes. Now you see her. Uh, come now, come now. Don't do that. Here. Take off your bonnet, child, and let me see you. Why, bless my heart. You're only a baby. And here you are with child and wearing a widow's weeds. Uh. <laughs> oh. Now, now, child. What's the matter? I, I'm all in a tremble. I, I don't know what will happen. I, I'll die. I'm sure I'll die. <laughs> that, my child, is absolute nonsense. What you need is a good, strong cup of tea. Oh, uh, uh, what do you call your girl? I don't know yet, but, but it will be a girl, ma'am. No, no, wait up, child. I meant your servant girl. Oh, Peggotty. Peggotty? Her Christian name is Clara, but that's the same as mine, so I call her Peggotty to avoid any confusion. Peggotty! We need some tea. No dawdle now. You were speaking about it being a girl. I have no doubt it will be a girl. I have a presentiment that it must be a girl. Now, from the moment of the birth of this girl... Perhaps boy. Don't contradict me, child. I intend to be your daughter's godmother, And I beg you'll call her Betsy Trotwood Copperfield. There'll be no mistakes in life with that Betsy Trotwood. No one will cause her to love me in vain. Oh, my dear Aunt Betsy, are you all right? Yes, of course. Of course, silly girl. She must be well brought up and well guarded. I must make that my care. It's the doctor you need, Mum. But don't just stand there, Peggotty. Be off and fetch the doctor. Quickly now. Oh. 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 There, there, child. It will soon be over. And I'll take care of your daughter. Oh. Oh. Trotwood, would you like to see the baby? He's a strong little fellow with a pair of lungs like the wind at sea. But he's well and so is my mistress. We've called him David after his father, David Copperfield. Miss Trotwood. How is she? Oh, she's comfortable, Mum. The doctor says she's as comfortable as a young mother can expect to be under these melancholy circumstances. Haggerty, you seem to have a mind as wondrous as your name. I meant the baby. How is she? My name seems to be as wondrous as your understanding, Mum. The baby is a boy. Oh. Oh. Yes, ma'am. You're a little cold, aren't you? <laughs> oh, we'll warm you up, my treasure. My treasure of a boy. Tea time, David. Oh, Peggotty, I'm starving. Only one biscuit, I'm afraid. Oh, Peggotty. These are hard times, David. Your father left a hundred pounds a year, but we seem to stretch it a bit thin sometimes. I uh, hope you had a pleasant evening, Mum. Oh, yes, thank you, Peggotty. A stranger or so makes an agreeable change. You don't approve of my going out, do you, Peggotty? But tell me, what should I do? Shave my head and hide my face. Mr. Copperfield wouldn't have liked this man. Oh, Peggotty, stop. <laughs> You'll upset young David. Perhaps what David needs is a holiday by the sea. Would you like to come and stay with my brother and his family at Yarmouth, David? Do you mean that, Peggotty? Of course. Oh, oh, he'd love to go, wouldn't you, David? What's your brother like, Peggotty? I'm sure he's a nice man. 
Is he the sort of man my father would have approved of? Oh, oh, Davy. <gasps> Follow me, and I'll show you our house. That's a house? That ship-looking thing? Yes, Master Davy. That's our home. Ahoy there! This is my brother, David, and this is his adopted niece, Emily. Welcome to the pair of you, and I hope you'll stay as long as you like. She's a shy one, little Emily. God bless her. Come on, young Davy. I'll show you your room. Here we are, Davy. Your own room. Thank you, Mr. Peggotty. Folks seem to be enjoying each other's company. You're quite a sailor, I suppose. Oh, no. I'm afraid of the sea. Afraid? I'm not. It's cruel. It's very cruel, the sea. I've seen it tear a boat as big as our house to pieces. I hope it wasn't a boat that the father was drowned in. No, not that one. I never see that boat. Nor him? Not to remember. I never saw my father either. Your father was a gentleman. Mine was a fisherman. And so is my uncle. He seems a very good man, your uncle. Good. If I was ever to be a lady, I'd give him a sky blue coat with diamond buttons and a pipe made of silver. You'd like to be a lady? Oh, yes. Emily! Hmm, look at them. Like a couple of young thrushes. I'm glad you had a good holiday, but now it's time to go home. Will we come back here, Peggotty? I'm sure we will. My brother said you could come any time you like, and he's a man of his word. You will write to me, won't you? Yes, Emily. And I'll miss you, too. We'd like to go home, please, Mr. Barkis. Bye. Now, what is it? 
I should have told you before now, but you were so busy and happy, and I couldn't exactly bring my mind to it. Go on, Peggy. Master Davy, what do you think? You've got a father. What? A new one. Come and see him. I don't want to see him. And your mother. Control yourself. Always control yourself. <laughs> Davy boy, how do you do? Oh, Peggy, I don't like him. I knew it'd be hard for you, Davy. That's why I took you to the seaside. It's going to be hard for me, too. But we'll make the best of it, won't we? Is he here to stay? Yes, Davy, he is. And his sister's arriving on Thursday. Oh! You must be the one with the strange name. Peggy, Mum. And this must be your mistress's boy. Yes, Mum. David. <laughs> Generally speaking, I don't like boys. How do you do, boy? Well, thank you, ma'am. But who are you? You want manners, this boy. I am Miss Murdstone, your new father's sister. And I have come to stay. You call this homework? But, Mr. Murdston, I find it difficult to do my work while you and Miss Murdston are here. I will not tolerate your impertinence, boy. Go to your room. some cake for your trip. Oh, thank you, dear Peggy. And there's also a purse with eight shillings in it from your mother. Goodbye, Davy. Write to me. I will, Peggy. I will. Keeps 
Easy, please. You understand, boy? Yes, sir. You're very smart, boy. Very smart for a boy who bites. Bites, sir? Your stepfather warned me about you. Can you read this, boy? Yes. It says, I bite. You'll wear that on your back. Oh, please, sir. Must I? When I say I'll do a thing, I'll do it. And when I say I will have a thing done, I will have it done. If I see you without it, boy, you'll see what a Tata can do. No, it's Copperfield. That's a nice name, Copperfield. How much money have you got, Copperfield? Eight shillings. You'd better give it to me to take care of. At least you can if you like. We don't have to if we don't want to. Do you want to spend anything now? No, thank you. You can if you like. Just say the word. No, thank you, sir. Perhaps you'd like to spend a shilling or so on almond cake. And perhaps another shilling or so on biscuits. And there'd be a couple of shillings worth in a bottle of red currant wine. Like me to get the stuff for you? Yes, I'd like that. I can go out when I like. And I'll smuggle the grog in. So don't worry about anything. My name's Steerforth, by the way. Are we all allowed to share in this feast? Of course. Steerforth's not a bully. Well, young Copperfield, I hope you're hungry. Yes, sir. Then eat up. Go on. So Robinson Crusoe had to build a raft to get out to the wrecked ship. And he set about building it by finding pieces of wood on the beach. Oh, I'm tired, Steerforth. Do I have to tell any more? No, that's enough for now. Good night, young Copperfield. And don't worry. I'll take care of you. Thank you, Steerforth. You haven't got a sister, have you? No. That's a pity. If you had one, I should think she would have been a pretty, timid, little, bright-eyed sort of girl. I should have liked to have known her. Good night. Good night, David. Good night, Treadle. than it was worth. It was very hard on the masters, sir, when they wished to cane him. The sign got in the way. <laughs> That's very well thought out, dear Bob. Very well thought out. <laughs> Silent boy! Thank you, Steerforth. I think... No trouble, young Copperfield. Oh, I ever saw Crinkle standing on the edge of a cliff. What's that? I... Shadows? Nothing, sir. You have visitors, Copperfield. Look smart, lad, and uh, keep your teeth to yourself. Hello, Master Davy. Hello, Mr. Peggotty. Hello, Ham. We brought you some whittles, Master Davy. Oh, thank you both. And tell me, how is dear Peggotty and little Emily? They're uncommon well, Master Davy. Uncommon well. Well, Davy, you must be settling into school by now. How'd you like it? Mr. Creakle is a bit of a tartar, but I have my friends, Traddle and Steerforth. Oh, that was a good catch. Oh, hello, Copperfield. Sorry if I disturbed you and your friends. I confess. I like the look of that lobster. We'll have a feast tonight. 
good day to you. That's Steerforth. He's a brilliant cricketer and a sailor who's afraid of nothing. And he's the only boy here that Mr. Creakle won't cane. They say it's because he knows all about Mr. Creakle's business failures in another town. Oh, all right. Well, he looks like a bit of a lad. If he's a sailor, as you say, bring him down to Yarmouth. You'll be pleased to see any friend of yours, Davy. I have bad news for you, Davy. Mother, is she all right? No, Davy, she's not. I'm afraid she's dead. Mother, dead? Oh no, no! She was always a poor, frail creature. She was never strong, and now the poor little thing is gone. Then what will I? She'll come home with me for the funeral. Then it'll be up to Mister Murdstone and his sister to decide what's to be done. But Peggy, what will I do? There, there, Davy. We must both. You behaved very well at the funeral, Davy. I didn't want Mr. Merton to see me cry. And I don't want to see you cry when I leave. Peggy, where are you going? Miss Merton has seen fit to dismiss me. But where will you go? I'll go to my brother at Yarmouth until I can find a mistress as good to me as your mother. Excuse me, miss. I told this young lad to tell you that Barkis is willing. Now I'm telling you that Barkis is still willing. <laughs> Sure, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Davy, I want you to know that you will always be my darling boy. And you come to me when you need me. I will, Peggy. I'm ready, Mr. Barkers. And you keep your eyes on the road. Aye. to take you away from that school where you appear to be making no progress. No progress at all. Jane, leave this matter to me, if you please. A boy of your disposition would do well to be exposed as soon as possible to the ways of the working world. I presume. My name is Micawber, Wilkins Micawber in short. You no doubt note that Wilkins Micawber is not a name you hear bandied about the ale houses of Suffolk, whence I believe you hail. I haven't heard anything. Quite so. I understand that your knowledge of London is not extensive. And as Mr. Murdstone has asked me to take you in as a lodger, I feel it my duty to present myself here in this modern Babylon and escort you to my home. Thank you, sir. Well met, Master Copperfield. Thank you, Mr. Micawber. A poor thing, but not 
by noon. After you, Master Copperfield. <laughs> I should be forced to take an adopture. But our finances are in such a state that I set my private feelings aside again. Uh, for all that, you're most welcome, Master Copperfield. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anything I can do to help? I fear not, Master Copperfield. Mr. McAlpha's affairs are in such a perilous state. I meant help you with your chores, ma'am. Oh, thank you. But as you can see, I have been well under control. <laughs> for some lunch, Master Copperfield? Thank you. Will you have some? Alas, Copperfield, there is no time. The wretch you see before you is this very moment the object of much wrath from his creditors. He must flee, Copperfield. Flee into the night or day, as the case may be. You're leaving? I am, and I thank you for being a model lodger. The advice I leave you, Copperfield, is this. Annual income, 20 pounds. Annual expenditure, 19, 19 and 6. Result, happiness. Annual income, 20 pounds. Annual expenditure, 20 pounds, ought and 6. Result, misery. Is there anything I can do to help? Bless you, but no. I trust we shall meet again, Copperfield. And if I can advance your prospects in any way, then I shall. Farewell, my young friend. Goodbye, Mr. McCorver. My nephew. David Copperfield? David Copperfield? Oh, yes. To be sure, David. Certainly. Come now, Mr. Dick. I want some very sound advice. Well, uh, if I were you, I should wash him. Of course. Oh, you're as sharp as a tech, Mr. Dick. That's exactly what we shall do with this boy. Is Mr. Dick your husband, Aunt Betsy? No, David. He's a distant relative. He was to be sent to a, a lunatic asylum? Well, yes. 
But I intervened, and now he makes a good home here. Now you have me as well, Aunt Betsy. And I'll do my best to be useful. I don't know that I do have you. I've written to your stepfather about the matter of your arrival. You're not going to give me up to him? I don't know. We shall see. Miss Trotwood, this unhappy boy who has run away from his friends and his occupation... And whose appearance is a disgrace. Jane, please have the goodness not to interrupt me. I'm sorry David's appearance does not impress me. Mr. Depp was kind enough to relinquish part of his extensive wardrobe to clothe the boy. It is not his appearance that concerns me, Miss Trotwood. It is his character. Mr. Dick, what shall I do with this child? Um, have him measured for a suit of clothes immediately. Oh, Mr. Dick, give me your hand. Your common sense is invaluable. You can go when you like. I'll take my chance with the boy. If he's all you say he is, I can do as much for him as you. But I don't believe a word of it and suspect you have much maltreated him. Oh, the nerve. Miss Trotwood, if you were a gentleman, oh, I'd... Oh, the nerve of her. Jane, please don't interrupt me Mr. when... Mr. Dick, you'll consider yourself guardian jointly with me of this child. Oh, thank you, Aunt Betsy. <laughs> I shall be delighted to be the guardian of such a bright young man. <laughs> Peggotty, I knew I'd see you again. Don't you look smart. Oh, I'm so glad to see you happy and settled. What about you, Peggotty? Have you found a new situation? No, David. I'm still staying with my brother. What about Barkis? Is he still willing? Oh, 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 he's willing, all right. But I'm not. The idea of marrying Barkis, I wouldn't have him if he was made of gold. Yarmouth near me brother. You must come to visit us. Young Emily will be pleased to see you, I know that much. I will, Peggotty. In the holidays. Aunt Betsy is sending me back to school. Am I going to a large school, Aunt Betsy? We're going to Mr. Wickfield's first. Does he keep a school? No, he keeps an office. Uriah Heath, is Mr. Wickfield at home? Yes, ma'am. If you'll please to walk in there. Well, my dear Miss Trotwood, what wind blows you here? Not an ill wind, I hope. No, Mr. Whitfield. I have not come on any matter of law, but for my grandnephew David here. I have adopted him and want your advice on a school where he may be thoroughly well taught and well treated. Well, the best school in the district has no room for boarders just now. Let me ask my little housekeeper what we should do. Did you want me, Father? Uh, David, this is my daughter, Agnes. Uh, should David want to board here, Agnes, would we have enough resources? I think so, Father. Well, David, what say you? I should like to stay, Aunt Betsy, as long as I can visit you and Mr. Dick every week. Of course. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Now, David, be a credit to yourself to me and to Mr. Dick. And heaven be with you. I shall do my best, Aunt Betsy. Have you had a good day at school, Master Copperfield? Yes, Uriah. Have you had a good day with your legal studies? Oh, yes, Master Copperfield. I'm going through Tid's practice. 
Oh, what a writer Mr. Tid is, Master Copperfield. If he were not a partaker of glory, I should like to shake his hand. Perhaps one day you'll be a great lawyer. Maybe it'll be Wickfield and Heath. Oh, no, Master Copperfield. I am much too humble for that. On your holidays from school, are you? Yes, Mr. Peggotty. And soon I'll be finished with school. You remember my friend Steerforth? Of course, he's the cricketer and the sailor. Hello, Mr. Peggotty. Well met. And this here's little Emily. She ain't my child. I never had one. But I couldn't love her more. I quite understand. Well met indeed. Little Emily isn't mine anymore. She'll be going away. What do you mean, Mr. Peggotty? He's engaged and will be married as soon as she is of the age. She's more to me, gentlemen, than... Well, she's all to me that ever I can want. I'd lay down my life for her. Come along then, Davy, and Mr. Steerforth. We'll have a cup of tea at the very least. That's a rather chuckle-headed fellow for the girl, isn't he? Now, come along, Steerforth. These are wonderful people, and you know it. Of course. You were fond of her, weren't you? Yes, but I have a feeling that someday I'll meet someone else. I'm worried, David. I'm so worried about the path. And I'm sorry that you've finished school and will be leaving us. I'm sorry to be leaving too, Agnes. But I must go to London and earn a living. I can't stay at school forever. I know, David, but we'll miss you. What's the matter with Mr. Wickfield? Uriah Heep is the matter. I believe he's going to enter into partnership with Papa. What? Uriah? How could that mean fawning snake be considered for such a promotion? Uh, Agnes, you must protest. What can I do, David? Uriah has discovered Papa's weaknesses and taken advantage of them. He's made himself indispensable. Here we are, Mr. Wickfield. And you'll be wanting some wine, too, won't you? Thank you, Uriah. And how are you this evening, Master Copperfield? Agnes, my little girl! She was crying. You go and see to her, Mr. Wickfield. I have risen from my humble station since you first met me, Master Copperfield. But I am humble still. You will not think the worse of my humbleness if I share a little confidence with you, Master Copperfield, will you? I suppose not. The confidence is this, Master Copperfield. Humble though I may be, I love Agnes Wickfield. I'm due in there, and I should look my best. Oh, I'm due in there, too. My name's Doris Benlow. Benlow? My father. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Master Davy. Mr. Peggotty. What are you doing in London? Oh, I've come to look for little Emily. She's run off with your friend she's here for. Here to my home? No. No. Come in, my 
We don't blame you at all, David. If it hadn't been Steerforth, it would have been someone else. That girl has always had ambitions. I feel so sorry for Ham. Where is he? He's been like that since she left. Poor Ham. I'll never forget this place. When I had no home, this was my home. Do you remember your old room, Davy? Oh, it seems so absurdly small. I want to thank you, Peggotty. When I had no mother, you were my mother. Davy, my boy. If I should turn out to be the hero of my own life, then you shall be the heroine. Now, Davy, don't go making me out to be that which I'm not. Now, you sit down and I'll get your breakfast just like I used to. Thank you, Peggotty. But where's Barkis? Surely your husband should get some breakfast, too. Barkis is done. Cricketer and the sailor. Hello, Mr. Peggotty. Well met. And this here's little Emma. She's more to me, gentlemen, than... Well, she's all to me that ever I can want. I'd lay down my life for her. Oh, thank you, David. How sweet. But I should give you some in return. I shall treasure anything you give me, Dora. Oh, how sweet. Don't you think he says sweet things, Chip? I think Chip is jealous of you, David. I have every reason to be jealous of Chip. If I could spend as much time with you as he does, then I should be happier than any man or dog in England. Oh, how sweet. Come and I'll show you the rest of the garden. Miss Murdstone, what are you doing here? Miss Murdstone has been engaged by my father as my companion and protector. How is it that you know her? Mr. Copperfield and myself once had connections. We were slightly acquainted. It was in his childish days. Circumstances have separated us since. I should not have known him now. Miss Murdstone lives here, does she? Yes, she does. And long to see you. Can you arrange for your companion and protector to be away for the day so that we can... <laughs> Mr. Micawber, how are you? Is it possible? Have I again the pleasure of beholding Copperfield? And how go your business dealings, Mr. Micawber? Ah, yes, business. At present, my dear Copperfield, I have found it necessary to fall back before making what I trust I shall not be accused of presumption in terming a spring. I'm sure you will spring like a tiger, Mr. Micawber. In the meantime, could I invite you and Mrs. Micawber to dine with me in my chamber? Young Copperfield and Chambers. Oh, time, you are a thief and a rogue. We shall be delighted, my friend, and you may depend upon it that we shall be hungry. Tomorrow evening, then. Tell me again where Miss Murdstone has gone. Out. Um, and for how long? <laughs> the whole day. And who is this opening your greenhouse door? You are. My dear Copperfield, this is luxurious. This reminds me of the period when I was myself in a similar state to your good self and Mrs. Micawber had not yet been solicited to plight her faith with this unworthy wretch. Have you any thoughts on the twin peaks of human existence, namely love and marriage, to occupy your mind? Indeed I have, Mr. Micawber. 
I have met the most wonderful girl. Her name is Dora. I couldn't be happier. Aunt Betsy, what an unexpected pleasure. Yes, indeed, David. Well, come in and sit down on the sofa. Thank you, David. I prefer to sit upon my property. Well, Aunt Betsy, is something the matter? David, have you become firm and self-reliant? I hope so, Aunt Betsy. Why do you think I prefer to sit upon this property of mine tonight? I don't know, Aunt Betsy. Because it's all I have. Because I'm ruined, my dear. Oh, no. My dear lady, fear not. I have been to the land of penury, but I have returned. Such is the human spirit. Your friend is right, David. We must learn to act the play out. We must live misfortune down and not suffer it to frighten us. Isn't that right, Mr. Dick? Come in. Hello, Copperfield. Fine morning. Not for everyone, I'm afraid, Mr. Spenlow. You have some unfortunate in mind? My aunt, sir, has fallen on bad times. And as a result, I must ask you, sir, if I may relinquish my articles with your firm and regain the thousand pounds I invested. I am sorry to hear this, Copperfield. Extremely sorry. Were the matter up to me alone, I should be happy to refund your thousand pounds, even though it would not be a convenient precedent, but... But, uh, sir... But I fear my partner, Mr. Jorkins, may prove immovable. He is a traditionalist and a very stubborn man. You must speak to him yourself when he returns. Agnes! What a delight! There is no one I would wish to see more in the world. What about this person, Dora, I have heard of? Well, yes. Perhaps Dora first, especially as I hope to marry her. But tell me, how go things at home? Well, not well, I'm afraid. Uriah Heap has moved into the house. He sleeps in your old room. Oh, I wish I had the ordering of his dreams. He wouldn't sleep there long. Oh, come and ride with me, David. We have much to catch up on. You must tell me about this Dora. Well, she's very pretty, needless to say. Is she silly as well? Silly? I mean, light-headed. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps just a little bit. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Spenlow. Be so good as to go up to my office, Copperfield. Yes, sir. Have the goodness to show Mr. Copperfield what you have in your handbag, Miss Murdstone. I believe that is your writing, Mr. Copperfield. Yes, sir. If I am not mistaken, those are also from your pen, Mr. Copperfield. My dearest own Dora. My best beloved angel. My blessed one forever. You may take these back. Miss Murdstone, be so good as to proceed. I entertain suspicions of your daughter and David Copperfield for some time. I observed Miss Fenlow and this man when they first met and the impression made upon me then was not agreeable. The depravity of the human heart is such... You will oblige me, ma'am, by confining yourself to facts. Very well. <clears throat> Last evening, after tea, I observed the dog rolling about the drawing room, worrying something. Dora, what is it the dog has in its mouth? It's paper. Oh, that miserable jip. Quiet, Mr. Copperfield. Proceed, Miss Murdstone. At the imminent risk of being bitten, I at length obtained possession of the document. It was, of course, a letter from David Copperfield. My suspicions had been confirmed. Do you have anything to say in reply? All the blame is mine. Dora Miss was... Spenlow, if you please. I love Miss Spenlow, sir, and I'm sorry she's been subjected to this bullying. You have been the cause of the trouble she now finds herself in. And you will oblige me by agreeing never to see her again. I cannot undertake to carry out such an agreement. You will not see her again. If she is willing, then I shall see her again. If only my brother had brought him up. Field, 
world, the companion of my youth. Well met, sir. Well met indeed, Mr. Micawber. But can this be right? Are you working for Wickfield and Heap? But where is your family? Have you a home? Indeed we have. Uriah Heap has moved into this house, and we have rented his former quarters. But what brings you to Canterbury? I had to go and check the tenants of my aunt's cottage for her. Have you seen Agnes? Is she about? Uh, through here, sir, lies the object of your affection. You mistake me, Mr. Micawber. I am engaged to be married to one Dora Spenlow. Welcome back, David. Agnes, I'm so pleased to see you. Now, be careful, David. Your friend Dora might get jealous. Dora and I are in difficulties at the moment. Her father has disapproved of our engagement and forbidden her to see me. I'm sorry to hear that, David. Agnes, you've always been dear to me. Oh, yes, David? Yes, you've been like a sister. Do I seem like a brother to you? No, you don't. Agnes, you seem to be upset about something. I'm not upset, David. But I really must go and call Papa for dinner. You will stay, won't you? Propose the toast to the provider of this excellent repast. The woman to put all others to shame. Do you mean Agnes? Agnes Rickfield is, I am safe to say, the most divine example of her sex. To be a father is a proud distinction, but to be a husband. No, 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 monster! Oh. Now, Mr. Wickfield, calm down. Calm down. Look at my torturer. Before him, I, I have step by step abandoned name and reputation, peace and quiet, house and home. You'd better stop him, Copperfield, if you can. He'll say something presently, mind you. You'll be sorry for afterwards. And you'll be sorry to avert. Oh, David. Oh, see the ruin I am. Papa, you're not well. Come with me. As I was saying, I give you the divinest of her sex. That's all I can give you. I've had losses and am poorer than I used to be. Now go. Aunt Betsy, if that beggar's bothering you, I'll have him arrested. It, it's all right, David. I know him. You know him? That tramp. He's my husband. Oh, no. Betsy Trotwood doesn't look a likely subject for tender passion. <laughs> but the time was, David, when she believed in that man most entirely. He repaid her by breaking her fortune and... and nearly breaking her heart. I'm so sorry. That's my grumpy, frumpy story. And we'll keep it to ourselves, won't we, David? Yes, of course, Aunt Betsy. Bless me soul, it's Davy. Who was that woman? That's Martha. She's from our town. Came to London and, well, she's not been well served by fortune. She says she can find Emily for me and will take me to her tonight. Will you, will you come with me, Davy? 
Yes, of course. No matter what she's become, I'll still love her. I'll be on this corner come 8 o'clock. Good night, young lady. for coming with me, Davy, and being my friend. It's nothing, Mr. Peggotty. Dora, my darling. You're no better. No, David. I'm sorry. Thank you for coming, Agnes. It means so much to me to have you here, giving all your wonderful support. Now, David, since you're so convinced that I'm like a sister to you, it behoves me to behave like a sister, and I'll do anything I can to help. Thank you, Agnes. David, Dora has made two requests. She would like to talk with Agnes alone, and she would like to talk to you alone. I'll see her now. Agnes, tell her that I love her and... that I'm sorry. Yes, David. She reminds me so much of your sweet mother, David. Such a sweet, pretty, frail creature. She's so delicate, like Tinsel. Yes, Peggotty. She's very like Tinsel. How is she now? It's as the doctor said. It depends on her will. Why does she want to see Agnes and I separately? I don't know, Davy. How much strength has she left? We'll know by morning. Not Mr. Copperfield and Mr. Dick. Well, well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Things have changed in this office, Miss Trotwood, since I was an humble clerk, haven't they? But I am not changed, Miss Trotwood. No, you've been pretty constant to the promise of your youth, if that's any satisfaction to you. Oh, thank you, madame, for your good opinion. Don't wait, Micawba. What are you waiting for, Micawba? Did you not hear me tell you to go? I did. Then why do you wait? Because I, in short, choose to. Go along. I'll talk to you presently. If there is a scoundrel on this earth with whom I've already talked too much, that scoundrel's name is Heath. Oh, I see. This is a conspiracy. You've never liked me, Copperfield, have you? And now you're plotting against me. Well, beware, Copperfield, for I'll counterplot you. Micawber, you be off. I'll talk to you presently. Mr. Micawber, 
You may deal with this fellow as he deserves. Very well. As soon after joining Wickfield and Heath, I found the agreed salary of 22 shillings and sixpence insufficient to alleviate the poverty of my family. I then entered into a state of indebtedness to the snake Heath in the form of IOUs. In return for these, I was called on to forge the signature of Mr. Wickfield and systematically defraud him and his clients, including Miss Trotwood. My books. My proof. It is you who have ruined me. Fear not, my lady. All shall be returned to you. We need a couple of officers of the law. And we need to have this heap made fast in a locked room. We are most grateful to you. You're a man who conducts himself well and is industrious. It seems to me that Australia would be a legitimate sphere of action for Mr. McCorbar. But tell me, have you ever thought of emigrating? I'm not sure that I... That's, of course, by a loan from me. Madame, I hear the call of the wild, and the call is Australia. I be a moment. Come in, Mr. Peggotty. There's no time. I've decided to take the Lamley far away, where there's time to forget. But where will you go? Australia. Emily's written a note to Armour. A good boy note asking his forgiveness. Will you take it to him? Yes, of course. God bless you, Davy. That's a remarkable sky. I've never seen one like it. Or I. Not equal to that. It's wind, sir. There'll be mischief done at sea, I expect, before long.
if anything should happen, or if I should have to go away, promise me this, that you'll always think of me at my best. Oh, you'd have no best or worst. You're my friend. Always will be. Agnes? David! I thought you'd gone to Switzerland to write your next book. Agnes, if I said I would like to call you something more than sister, something widely different from sister, I would, of course, run the risk of losing your sisterly love. But the fact is, Agnes, I love you. And I've only just realized it. How do you feel? Do I love in vain? Tell me, Agnes, oh, tell me. There is one thing I must say. What is it? I have loved you all my life. husband. Now that I may call you that, I have one more thing to tell you. What is it, my love? Just before she died, Dora asked to see me. I remember. She made a last request of me, that I would do all in my power to make her wish come true. That if you remarried, it would be to me. Then her wish has come true. Yes, my darling.